So I'm going to create a quick, fairly simple project that enables me to fire projectiles and then we'll see if we can add a little bit of an explosion effect to that too. So I will start by creating a new project. First person action game already has some of the elements set up for me, so I'll just do that. Good idea to change the title right away, so I'll call this Explosion um, Projectile Explosion Demo. The area beneath that you can put in instructions. I know that the starter project uses arrow keys to move, so I'll say use arrow keys to move and space bar to fire projectiles. So the first thing that I want to do in Webland in this area here is add a few breeds. And I'm not going to have turtle, so let's rename the turtle. Let's call that player. And other characters, I like to call those enemies. And I'm going to add a new breed called projectile. Since we're here, let's also add a breed called Explosion. And we'll see later why it's helpful to have an additional breed just for the explosion. Now I can close that window, scroll down to the code view, and of course now I have a tab for each of my breeds, including the ones that I renamed and the ones that I've created for this effect. So let's go to Player. Right now, while playing, having the up arrow moves forward. If I'm holding down arrow, it goes back, left and right, turn left and right. And by default, the collision is set on the player. In a minute, we're going to change that because we don't want the player to explode when it hits a projectile. We want an enemy to explode when it collides with a projectile. But the first thing we have to do is set it up so that when we press the space bar, a projectile gets created. So under interface, I'm going to grab another while toggled. So while the play button is toggled, while my game is playing, I want to check and see if the space bar is held. So what if I just click on the if, copy and paste, so then I have my if here. Of course, if I want to do that manually, I can go to logic and pull the if out. But I would like to fire only when I'm clicking the space bar, not while I'm holding it down. I just want to be able to fire one at a time. This isn't going to be automatic. So let's go to keyboard, if key typed, and as I said, we'll use the space bar, which is near the bottom. So if space bar typed, what do I want to do? Well, I, first thing I want to do is create a projectile object. So we will go to Agents, Create, and usually you want to do something when you create an object. So I'll grab a Create Do. One projectile. So if spacebar typed, click Projectile. And what I want that projectile to do, well, let's make sure that it has the shape that I want. So under traits, I'm going to set my shape to what? Well, let's use a built-in shape. And my favorite for projectiles right now, let's see, it's, it was too close to the trash. It was getting confused. I'm going to go to fireball, and I know that fireball 2 works well. It looks like it's shooting a fireball or a comet away from the player. So now whenever the spacebar is typed, it should create a projectile. Now once the projectile is created, what do I want the projectile to do? Well, I assume we want it to go forward. So the nice thing is when you create an agent on another agent's tab, so in this case the player, 
it's going to be facing in the same direction as the player, which is exactly what we want. So projectile, now I can say, while play toggled, move. So I'll say forward, two. Since I had the player moving forward one, we wanted to go a little bit faster than the player. So let's test what we have. I'm going to click Setup, Play. I'm going to use my left and right arrow keys to move around. Then I'm going to use my space bar. Hmm. So what's happening is the space bar is creating a tiny little projectile. It's really too small to see. So let's make that projectile a little bit bigger. But did you also notice the projectile isn't doing anything when it collides with an enemy? We need to fix that too. So projectile, uh, we created that on player. So in addition to setting the shape, we should also set the size to be larger than what we had. So inside that do, set size, let's try three. I will set up, play, and now when I fire, uh, maybe I need to run code to make sure that it's bigger. Yes, that's what I needed to do. So now that I'm doing it, now you can see it's quite a bit bigger. Looks like a fireball. Now it's white. So that's one problem that I don't like. And also notice it's ricocheting off the sides. The fireball just keeps bouncing around as if it's a ball. Nah, it doesn't really look like you're firing a projectile that way. I think it's a little too large too. So let's set the size to 2 and let's also set the color and we'll use a built-in color red. Okay, so now it's creating a fireball. The size is 2 and it's red. But it wasn't colliding with the enemies because the only collision I have set up right now is between the player and the enemies. So why don't we just select this whole collision block, which already has score and everything. And I'm going to scroll down a little bit, click cut, go to the projectile, and paste that code. So what I could say is now for the projectile, when it collides with an enemy, delete the collide, which in this case is the enemy, but don't we also want to delete the fireball, the projectile itself? So I'll go back to agents and use a simple delete block. So now when a projectile collides with an enemy, it's going to increase the score by one, delete the enemy or the collide, and also delete itself. So let's test that. I'm going to run code setup play and fire. Cool. See what's happening now? So when it hits, not too exciting because everything's moving so slowly, but it did delete Let's make things a little bit bigger. Ah, notice it's, it's having trouble displaying all these, all this code. So sometimes if I drag a code block out and drag it back in, it sort of fixes that. See, so now I can read that code again. I don't want 200. I think that's going to make this a little bit laggy. So I'll just make it 50 enemies. And let's change the size of both the player and the enemies to be a little bit bigger. Oops, I accidentally put this inside the create. So I want those separate. Create one player, create 50 enemies. And under traits, let's add a size to each of those. It was particularly difficult um, to aim at the enemies because they were a little bit too small. So let's set the enemies to two and the player to two. And since I made the player a little bit bigger, I'm going to make the projectile a little bit bigger too. We created that on the player tab. Let's make the projectile 3. Let's test it and see what's going on up here. Set up play. Okay, now it's just a little bit easier to see 
what I'm doing, which is cool. Do you also notice when I'm hitting play, the fireball is being created in the same exact spot where my player is? I think we want it to be created a little bit in front of us. So I will just go back to where it's creating that fireball here. Why don't we have it move forward a little bit when it's created? So that way it really looks like it's coming out of the front. So we could just have it move forward, say, two. Let's test that. Run code, set up, play. Let's see. Yeah, so now, now it really does look like, in fact, if I go to uh, reset camera to see overhead, and zoom in a little bit, it might be easier to see. So now when I fire, it's coming out of the front. That fireball is moving really slow, in my opinion. So one way to make a fireball move faster is to have it go forward more than two at a time. So we want to go to the projectile where we say it's moving forward two the whole time that's toggled. We could say move ten to make it a lot faster, but watch what happens. I'm going to run code, set up, play. Now watch. Yes, it's going faster, but sometimes it's hitting an object, but it's not deleting it. The problem is it's moving too far ahead, so it's not actually in the same space as the pyramid, and we still have that ricochet back and forth, which I don't like. So in this case, increasing forward above 2 doesn't work as well. It means it's not always going to collide with the object because it's moving too many spaces at a time. But what we could do is change that back to 2 and increase the speed of our game by clicking on the slider and dragging it all the way to the bottom. Watch what happens now. I'm going to set up play. Now, yes, it increased the speed, and now I have a nice fast fireball, but everything else is moving a lot faster. So if I am going to increase the speed so that I have a faster fireball, let's go back to the player and say move uh, 0.25 and maybe just 2.5 degrees at a time, 2.5 degrees. And for the enemies, we also want to decrease their speed. They're at 0.5 already, so maybe we'll make those 0.25. Run code, set up, play. That's more like it. So now I'm moving really at about the, the it's about moving about the pace that I was initially, but my fireball's going faster than I am, which I like. So if I move, I'm moving forward now, my fireball's way faster. How do we get rid of that ricochet? Well, since our terrain is 100 by 100, it actually goes from x is 0 and y is 0 in the center. It can go to x of 50, y of 50, or x of negative 50, y of negative 50. So couldn't we just say, on our projectile, while play toggled, if... Our x value, my x, is greater than 50. Well, wait a minute. Can't be greater than 50. 50 is the maximum. So maybe we should say if my x, under logic, I have my greater than and less than. So if my x is greater than 48, since we're going two at a time, we don't want to go above 48. What do we want to do? If my x is greater than 48, well, remember under agents, we have that delete block like we used in our collision. Delete. If my x greater than 48, delete. Let's select those blocks together, copy, paste, and say if my y greater than 48, delete. And we also want to check and see if less than negative 48, delete. So I can grab my logic blocks this way, or I can just copy and paste again. Why don't we copy and paste both of those now? Copy, paste. 
Now I'm going to have to replace the greater than with less than, so I'm just going to drag these off to the side. Under logic, take a less than if my x less than negative 48, delete, if my y, let's get rid of that, if my y is less than negative 48, I also want to delete. So now, once that fireball approaches the edge of the screen on any side, it should delete instead of bouncing or ricocheting all over the place. Run code, set up, play, and fire a bunch so we can see if that's really the case. Yeah, so even if it doesn't hit a pyramid, it is deleting as soon as it gets to the edge of the screen, which is cool. Now, it is kind of fun to be able to fire this fast, but if I want the game to be a little bit more realistic, if I want to make it a little harder to shoot my enemies, maybe I should put a bit of a pause in there so I can't fire as quickly. How would I do that? Well, it's probably going to be on the player because that's where it's checking the space bar. What if we put a yield in there? Yield is the same thing as pausing, so I could put a yield inside that if. So before you're checking for the space bar again, before you're creating another projectile, wait a minute. Yield. Let's run code, set up, play. So I'm clicking my space bar just as fast, but I'm not getting as many projectiles this time. See? And I can put in several yields depending on how I want to slow it down. Or a way that I like to, to work with yield is to put it inside a repeat block. So that way I don't have to put a whole bunch of yields. I can just say, well, repeat three times. Give me three yields. I'll go back up to run code, set up, play. Actually, it looks like it's creating them just as fast. So I think what I might need to do is have that yield be outside of the if. So each time it's checking to see if the space bar is going, let's go run codes, oops, set up, play. Sorry, I've got this crazy little thing that freezes my screen every once in a while. Play. There we go. Now so that's really slow. That's probably slower than I want. So it seems to me that in this case, just having a yield after that if. Run code, set up, play. Yeah, one, one is enough. It's limiting how quickly I can fire. But if it deletes one, then I can fire right away. So that's cool. It's rewarding me for good aim. So in the next tutorial video, I'll show you how to actually make these things explode when they get hit, you know, just for fun.